Hello out there, my friends. It is I, Hondo Onaka. Now you know what to do. You must tune in to my favorite podcast, The Five-ish Fangirls. Otherwise, there could be consequences. The tangents this week continue all the way to episode 377 of the five-ish fangirls podcast and who knew fandom could lose their mind over two little words hello there Mm -hmm. (laughs) welcome everyone to this week's episode of the five-ish fangirls podcast so like join us let's start off like a dirt on the virtual table and see who joined us this week this is Brittany Bobadilla. This is Chrissy in Salt Lake City. This is Sally from Wisconsin. This is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. Hello Should we there. say hello there? <laughs> hello there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Mm-hmm. Well, well, if you haven't realized what we're talking about yet, yeah, (laughs) well, we'll get to that. Well, you must have missn't the thumbnail, I suppose. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, didn't bother read the title, nothing. No, Uh, just Just going in cold. (laughs) Yeah, Mm -hmm. um, so first, we do the news. Uh, so just a little bit of news. So, um, just to keep our whistles wet or our the nightmares going, wet. I get, <laughs> I guess. Uh, <laughs> just play some Kate Bush, you'll be fine. Yeah, really. Yeah, uh, exactly. We got we to gotta, uh, look at uh, the final two episodes of season four of Stranger Things, which. Hey, hey, holy considering the <laughs> run time of these final two episodes i will let them have it because yeah. we've been down this road before where they've stopped with like a, a small number of episodes left in the season and then had a break and then came back and be like really we took a break for this but mm-hmm. considering what like each uh, there's two episodes left but they're oh each is over two hours long so mm-hmm. yeah, yeah it's so. like no, 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 no. Uh, See, I, they're taking a page out of Critical Role's book with their episodes being two, four hours long with role play with a 15 minute break in between. But yeah, yeah this is like, yeah, when, a- this is like when the fourth <laughs> season of Sailor Moon Crystal, also known as Sailor Moon Eternal, came out and it's two movies, but they said straight up they're two movies and it takes the whole story arc. Mm-hmm. But it's, yeah, but it's basically a season long of what they were doing before runtime. You take out the the titles and repeats, and it's like two mm-hmm. you know two episodes, but they're stupid long. So mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. I guess they figure. I mean, at least in the United States, it's a it's a holiday weekend. So like, well, what else are you going to be doing? Oh gosh, I don't know. Going to parades, barbecues, setting setting the state Staying on fire inside where there's air conditioning. <laughs> that too. Yeah. <laughs> watching i mean we go to the parade then we come home and sit in the air conditioning and watch movies and eat food they say there you mm-hmm. go <laughs> but yeah i don't i don't know i don't know that uh, stranger things is going to be a where where we're gathering with all the little kids i don't think it's gonna be uh no. for, for general audiences yeah that that, that that's gonna be after not the exactly the little ones. Bed if you if yeah. you aren't exactly crashed out to, after they're in bed just... oh i'll be crashed out <laughs> I, i'm crashed out on a normal on a normal night after mm-hmm. the kids have gone to bed but mm-hmm. yeah no i i mean yeah i watched that that trailer and i was like ooh, because i you know i watched if i watched the first the first big chunk and loved it spoilers mm-hmm. um <laughs> but yeah don't watch the trailer if you haven't seen the first however many episodes that was they all it, i mean yeah they're broken up into episodes and everything but you just you sit and watch them in one go i mean come on um it's like one long movie <laughs> yeah it's one big long movie and yeah so if if you haven't watched that don't watch the trailer yet go watch those 
mm-hmm. you know, and then come back and, you know, get excited for for July 1st, which is this Friday as we are recording. I yes. mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's mm-hmm. like, what? Is that, what? <laughs> Mm. yeah i know it's almost july i'm like i mean yeah. i mean with the weather outside i definitely believe it mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's just like it's july already but yeah. here we are mm-hmm. so so, but, so yeah. look forward to that and we of course we will have our review on the whole stranger things season four in due course so mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. once we pick ourselves that... up off the floor mm-hmm. and yeah yeah mm-hmm. which i i still i mean just after this the this first chunk i still had to you know yeah roll my roll my mm-hmm. jaw up off the floor because <laughs> oh, the floor yeah, yeah. Yeah. Gotta, gotta pick ourselves up off the floor and stop cursing the uh the duffer brothers long enough yes. to yeah. say something so <laughs> Be- between between that and the new top gun i was like okay i gotta load all the 80s music onto my phone so i can listen to it mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that's yeah when, when i when i'm not doing audiobooks or podcasts that's what i'm listening to i'm like i'm yeah. i'm throwing it back y'all mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah all right well there's that and um coming up this wednesday as we're recording this on the 29th of june at 11 a.m eastern standard time you can tune in to the disney parks blog and i'm sure the disney parks youtube channel slash facebook page and all the other places that disney has pres- presence and watch the christening of their newest ship in the fleet of cruise ships the disney wish so but what's really cool is the um usually the ships have a celebrity godmother uh <laughs> um, so like yeah. jennifer hudson is one of the godmothers mariah carey is a one of the ship's yeah. godmothers uh, and, and i don't know is... if the ship will have a godmother uh, in addition but they have announced that they're the, this this ship instead it, or maybe in addition to uh, i guess we'll find out on wednesday is going to have god children oh, cool. and that is going to be all the make-a-wish children who have ever been and ever will be nice yeah the the, love that that is cool yeah that is a tradition not not just with disney ships but you know going back years and years and years as long as ships have been a thing whoever christens the the ship that to like the godparent or you know however it works is so yeah that's a long naval tradition but that's cool that they're doing it with the make-a-wish kids Mm mm-hmm so awesome yeah and then there's going to be um uh obviously merchandise uh, available <laughs> for sale well of uh, specific but they're going to be donating to to make a wish um oh. the cruise line donated uh one of the state rooms uh, i'm assuming is some sort of auction or something um raised like a quarter of a million dollars so then that's going to go to both both make a wish and give kids a world and give the give kids the world village <laughs> mouthful i can speak i promise uh which we've discussed before because that's what the indie disney meet was a fundraiser for was give kids a world so nice mm-hmm. Well, that's exciting so yes tune and stay, in for that and stay tuned to both lou bongello and becky Mankin as they will be sailing mm-hmm. on said ship on her maiden nice voyage, so. cool <laughs> nice, nice. Nice. I, I know i had seen a facebook post yeah <laughs> i think lou's gonna be on that yep i jealous well they, yeah. they've they've got they've got to break in all you know the the beds and the bathrooms and i mean there's always kinks on the first the first round on a ship so yeah this know. isn't their this isn't their first ship though so well yes but this yeah. is this is disney's fifth cruise ship in the current lineup of 
available ships to go on vacation on. So, which I really want to go on this one because there's an Avenger themed restaurant. Well, there you go. <laughs> nice. Thanks. It's like, it's like I always want to cruise on a Disney ship for the food anyway. Uh, but this one's got an Avengers themed restaurant. So, sign oh. me up. <laughs> <laughs> yes please and thank you you're disney <laughs> you'll, you'll have available. to go you'll have to go in the yeah we'll we'll review it for you yeah we'll, we'll get we'll get the pictures of the cupcakes just right i promise uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> i mean think of how much ground we can cover with the number of us yeah uh-huh. <laughs> yeah uh, so anyway so there is that um and that's really it for the news we do have some miscellaneous housekeeping type things of course in your feeds uh is uh the newest episode for gold standard with our first uh movie of the 1980s with the film ordinary people Mm -hmm. um and and then in the gold standard patreon feed is this month's patreon chosen film thank god it's over now the godfather part three (laughs) (laughs) oh yeah finish the trilogy yes survived what a waste of time (laughs) yeah what what is it i mean not with every trilogy ever certainly but it just seems like they like they're you know you start out a a movie trilogy like the first one is 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 good good enough to get a Mm -hmm. sequel then the second is amazing and then the third is just it's there it's 16 cash years grab. later it was a cash grab <laughs> oh <Yeah>. i know <laughs> pretty pretty As someone much sat yeah. through and watched all three of them one and two yeah three yeah, yeah. <laughs> well then, then I'm I'll, of- all i'm saying is is our our patron steve who picked it is not on my christmas card list at the moment <laughs> so well the well the other trilogy i was thinking of was spider-man from way back when but there are others too but yeah that one uh they just had to yeah yeah well yeah they made him an offer they couldn't refuse money yeah. dear boy <laughs> yeah like we're gonna, they round refused the it. Yeah, we're gonna round out the trilogy so many years later and it's like looking at the current crop of remakes and sequels and reboots although apparently mm-hmm. you know top gun maverick sounds like it's it's a it's it's a winner so i haven't seen it yet and i want to but a lot of sequels that come out these days of things from years and years ago it's like what are you doing Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, if you want to listen to that you can go support gold standard on patreon so sometimes it's fun to listen to someone else's pain <laughs> um and then um <laughs> coming up this weekend as we're recording this so first weekend of july i will be at in conjunction and i had put together a nice postable graphic of my panel schedule and then they put out a call for volunteers for a last minute thing and i volunteered but right now i gotta make sure it's actually happening so <laughs> stay tuned on the social medias though so. well because right, they, they needed they needed a minimum number of people to really make this particular panel happen and it's I don't think we've got the right uh, the, enough warm bodies quite yet. So we'll see. Ah. We shall see. So well, I may go ahead and just post the stuff I know for sure is happening. And then and maybe maybe an asterisk by the Twitter by the or something. And once I know for sure, so <laughs> for the other thing. <laughs> but I'm looking forward in conjunction. So always a fun little convention to go to 
All right, so moving on to feedback. So we got some feedback from Shalane. Um, and she mentions uh, the space, the uh, Bell Brooks movies that she's seen, uh, including Spaceballs, Young Frankenstein, it's Frankenstein. Um, <laughs> Because Mel Brooks, obviously, we know him from those, but he's also done a lot of voice acting work, which she she mentions for anime movies. So he's done things like Hotel Transylvania uh, and some other stuff. Um, and then she says she's seen the the producers' movie with Matthew Broderick and Nathan Lane. It's a thing that happened. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the Gene Wilder it's, it's, one is better. Yeah, the Gene Wilder is what. The Gene Wilder version is the movie that inspired the stage musical, which in turn was turned into a movie musical mm-hmm. with Matthew Broderick and Nathan Lane. So <laughs> it's yeah. one of those things. It's kind of like hairspray. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. Just keep getting recycled. Yeah. Yep. Where it wasn't a musical first, but then it became a musical and the musical was a hit. And then they're like, hey, but not everybody can get to Broadway. So let's make a movie version. And mm-hmm. yep. The movie version of Hairspray is actually not bad. Mm-hmm. The producers no. not so much. Well, um, John yeah. John Barrowman plays a Nazi. <laughs> that that is yes. true. And, so so watch the, it for uh, that. Ma- if, yes. well, if, although, if although you that. Just, this, yeah. I okay. like Nathan Lane. I have issues with Matthew Broderick. Like Ferris Bueller, great, mm-hmm. yeah, great he's, movie. But he's he's got yeah. a really good supporting cast that really helps. Yeah, but yep. like on his own, Not like so I try nice. to watch the, the 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 his the film version of the Music Man that he did with Christian Chenoweth, and I just uh. I could not do it because he is so dull. He's wooden. He's, mm-hmm. he's he, in a lot of his roles. If he has a good director, that yeah. then he does he does well. He's like Natalie Portman. Yes, you know if so, if he's yep. got good direction, then then it that's fine. I mean, he was the voice of Simba, and that was fine. But also that you know voice thing. But if he's right. got got good a good director and it, and the cast around him, and like like he has to be the one to carry everything, it's not as good. And well, in Ferris Bueller, I mean, because he's he he you know it's not the that um kind of. I don't want to say it's I don't want to say that one's wooden but that kind of deadpan it works thing. it for works the it, it works, works yeah. cuz you know you got mm-hmm. Cameron who's neurotic and and everything and so it it so you know the kind of the the whole straight man to the everyone else going nuts around him that works but mm-hmm. yeah but then I mean, is decent Orgeons yeah. is decent yeah uh, yeah, the the music man. I have strong. That's because he's a kid in that. <laughs> well, that too. Right. Yeah. True. true yeah. True. And I was gonna say I have strong opinions about the music man. That's like one of the music. Like my my dad and I will watch that musical together, and it's mm-hmm. amazing. The Robert Preston version. Oh, mm-hmm. it's got my heart, mm-hmm. and he's just so. I love it. And yeah, then then the Matthew Broderick one. I was like, this looks so bad. It looks it's cheap, so bad. and it's not it. Mm-hmm. And you know his performance does not help but the whole the set production and even some of the casting it's like it looks so bleh. Yeah, it's like this is bleh. not the music man i have i have yeah. seen high school productions or community productions of this where like it's all volunteer that looks so much better than yeah. this, this <laughs> that yeah i think dis it was because i remember it being on disney like wonderful world of disney or yeah uh, whatever i was on tv i yeah. remember it you know in the late early 2000s early 90s yeah, it was one remember. of those abc sunday night movie yeah type things. yeah those ki- one of those kinds of things and i'm like you have a studio with cash behind you why does this look so blech yeah mm-hmm. so yeah yeah so anyway watch watch the robert preston version yeah so, i mean so mel brooks not they can't all be winners but you know he tries uh, <laughs> from what I understand, Matthew Broderick's great in the stage version of the producers. I guess he does really well on stage. He's just not a film type person. I guess uh, so. So you know, if he does well on stage, yeah, go with God. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. bless you um, for it. So, <laughs> but uh, Shalane says she loves Spaceballs. Uh, she says she watched it on May the Fourth for Star Wars Day. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I love that. It works. Yeah, that works. 
that mm-hmm. makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then she mentions because obviously Spaceball is a spoof on Star Wars with a little bit of Star Trek in there. This so then she mentions Galaxy Quest, which is essentially a spoof mm-hmm. on Star Trek. And then she asks if we're going to talk about Galaxy Quest one of these days. Yes, we will. We will yeah. talk about Galaxy I, Quest. I, I will days. say this. I that was one of those movies that I have not been able to return to since Alan Rickman passed. Ah. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, now, I can't remember if I mentioned this last week or not, but but Jared and I, like when we were watching Spaceballs the night before, we were kind of like, it, Jared was kind of like, just, you know, out of curiosity, he's like, would you like, which one do you like better, Spaceballs or Galaxy Quest? And I was like, I can't compare the two because they're about two very different things and not just Star Wars versus yeah. Star Trek. Galaxy Quest is about the fandom culture mm-hmm. around mm-hmm. Yes. Star Trek and about the mm-hmm. actors mm-hmm. and, you know, what if the TV show yep. was real? But, you know, it's still yep. in our universe. Then that kind of thing. Spaceballs is straight up a parody of, of Star Wars and a lot of other science fiction. So it's more in universe. Yep. Galaxy mm-hmm. Quest is kind of breaking its own fourth wall. So you yep. can't really yep. compare the two. They're both amazing movies and hilarious yes. as all get out. But, you know, to say, which one do you like better, Spaceballs or or, or or Galaxy Quest? That's like asking, you know, do you like cheesecake or do you like pizza? Well, uh-huh. they're both the round and they have a crust. Los dos. Yeah. Yeah. They, 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 cheese. Yeah. They, <laughs> yeah. It, it's, yeah. It's, it doesn't, the comparison doesn't quite work. It's, I will have pizza for dinner and cheesecake for, for dessert. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I can have both. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yes. Why not to, to bring up the gift from Road to El Dorado? Why not both? Both. Both. <laughs> exactly. Both is, both. Both both. is good. Both is good. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I so think yes, yeah, we, we, Shalane, we, should. We, will, we will do Galaxy Quest at, at some yes. point. I'll just... we, we will we'll have to see if we can get Jared on that podcast. Yes, yeah. that would be. I'll fun. have to make sure that I'm emotionally prepared. Yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's you know, a good the, thing. The, it's a comedy. Yeah, so I that was really gonna helps. say. Yes. Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah. it's a comedy, so it, that might that might be useful. I haven't been able to watch Sense and Sensibility because. Yeah, I just listened to the audiobook. I'm like, yeah. I want to watch that movie again. Oh wait, Alan Rickman's in it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. Like Die it. Hard, no problem. Oh, well, yep. <laughs> I've been able to continue to watch Die Hard every Christmas, but uh, yeah. bye bye, like, Hans. Yeah, <laughs> Tommy Chower. He, he's so evil in that that is, you know, yes. it's just like he, yeah. you know, it's, it's, he's, he's so much fun to watch, but, you know, it's like, all right, time to fall off Nakatomi to, you know, tower. It's but, Christmas uh, now. Yeah. No, yep. <laughs> but, exactly. Some of his other stuff is I have just not been able to return to it since he passed. So, but well, we will we'll cross there. that bridge eventually. Yeah. Yeah. Because Galaxy Quest is good. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Shalane, for your feedback as always. Oh. And in a weird roundabout kind of way, we did space balls and we're going to stick in the Star Wars universe. <laughs> we, didn't really, of... we didn't really plan this, but it's just kind of how it happened. Uh-huh. So and, yeah. you know yeah. what also happened with all those planning? What? Uh, um, this episode is 377. When did the first Star Wars movie come out? Oh! <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, the 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 podcast gods are smiling upon us this day. Yep. <laughs> and the and last week. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> anyway. Yep. So, yeah, so we're returning to the sands of various planets uh yeah Yeah. the proper star wars universe with obi-wan kenobi aka obi-wan needs therapy uh yeah (laughs) yeah oh gosh uh obi-wan is probably glad he doesn't have younglings to deal with (laughs) yeah 
Yeah. Yeah. Young Luke Skywalker has <laughs> no idea what he has to look forward to. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Obi-Wan's like, okay, I'm going to go be a desert hobo now. Mm-hmm. <sighs> I'll come back when uh, when I need to tell you about the uh, duck woman uh, yeah. duck woman uh, chicken face thing you know, in the bushes of love. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh, I was like, where are you going with this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bad lip breathing. Yes. No, Everybody's no, got a duck woman chicken thing waiting for us. Wait in the bushes of love. See, uh, see, the one I listen to a lot is "It's Not the Future" because it's anyway. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, so Obi Wan uh, takes place approximately ten years after the events of Revenge of the Sith. So, uh, you know, Anakin is full on Darth Vader, obviously. Uh, the twins have been separated at birth. Leia is now with Bail Organa, being raised as the daughter of a senator and a princess. And Luke is and sass being a the pain in the long. ass to his uncle. <laughs> uh, so, and Obi Wan's just trying to live his life in the mm-hmm. deserts of Tatooine mm-hmm. as Doing. a as a meat processor in the middle of the desert heat that's gotta be that's gotta be ripe I guess ripe. Yeah. Yeah, that, 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 like, I was like I mean I know I know that you know this is this this planet is you know full of scum and villainy but ew yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. like no wonder, no wonder the huts are running things. Nobody's got anything that'll. Yeah. He's got like could have terrible nutrition mm-hmm. and food standards. Jeez. Yeah. Surprised Luke made it to its to, to his tenth birthday. Yeah. yeah. Really. <laughs> no kidding. So, um, so six episodes, so this is essentially a mini series. Um, all of them directed by Deborah Chow. Um, who did um, also some of the Mandalorian among mm-hmm. other things. So this is not her, her first, <laughs> first go round in the star Wars universe. Um, I mean, it's it, the, the, the really what this did is fill in more of the lore of Obi-Wan Kenobi and mm-hmm what exactly happened during that time in between episodes three and four um Mm -hmm. and um you know how much involvement does he have with both luke and leia before he ends up being forced into it (laughs) Mm -hmm. which he kind of does in this anyway because you know bail organa comes to him going my daughter's been kidnapped please help me you're the only one i trust (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. my Um, only hope yes exactly (laughs) so which you know um you know always good to see um Jimmy Smith. Yeah, Jimmy Smith's Jimmy back is, uh, is Bail Organa. Yeah. So and I I did like I did like you know his little interaction with, with Leia. I'm like, yes. oh, you're such a good dad. You're you're just and he's encouraging her after the yeah. after mama gave Leia the scolding, like, you shouldn't be doing that to your cousin, even though he probably deserved it. And Bail's yeah. like, yeah, you just keep doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean he's I mean, it, it's not it's not known really how much her her adopted mother knows like her background or mm-hmm. things like that. But it's 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 sort of like like he knows he knows who her mom and dad are. He knows how important she's going to be to mm-hmm. you know overthrowing the evil empire and and all these things. So he's you can tell he is trying to mentor her in that way. And I'm like sitting there going yep. like ah. Oh, I want to show with 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 Daddy Jimmy Smiths and Little Leia just 
starting yes. starting the rebellion yes. or you know a teenage uh, version maybe mm-hmm. at that point mm-hmm. because that was one thing and it came up a lot you know in the between you know when the prequels between the prequels and when disney took over is that we never got to see alderaan we never you know and 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 that's you know the first i mean it's it's a heavy moment in a new hope your in your entire home planet gets destroyed and we like leia at that point because we, we we've seen her we know her just to know that first little bit of the movie but you know we don't know her home planet we never get to see it in the movies or i mean now we've seen it in the show a little bit but it's it's kind of like come on there's you know stuff with 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 young leia there's and I'm trying to think if there were any books about Tiny Leia before. I don't think so. No, there I mean, was the- one that was oh with Holdo, but that was about it, and that was a few years ago. But nothing. Yeah, that nothing one was in the lead in up the- to. That was in the lead up to the Last Jedi, which right. I don't want to. I don't want to open that can of worms. But that one, no. that one ticked me off because yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, but we get the, I mean, we get some the Legends rebellion. universe. There was nothing for young Leia. Yeah, yeah. so I'm like, I mean, we up. we get re- we get Rebel leader Leia in the cartoons, mm-hmm. right? A little bit. Yeah. Oh, she and, still doesn't play a big part, but we so but we do get to see that you know before she do, you know before she's on a diplomatic mission. I do mm-hmm. air quotes. <laughs> peaceful diplomatic get... mission that where she gets captured yeah. at the start of episode four that she was you know kind of in there in the trenches you know shooting and fighting with the the best of them so mm-hmm. we can we can only assume that that holster that that obi-wan yeah. gives her at the end she keeps <laughs> yeah yes well, and it's it's mm-hmm. kind of like this yes. this show feels like you've squished like three different show ideas into one and i'm like i want to see more of you know that that moment with 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 leia and 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 her dad it's like i want to see a whole series of this like her or you know in you know you watch clone wars there's like you know you you see padme you know going on diplomatic missions and you think oh this is going to be boring but it's actually kind of entertaining and a lot of fun it's like can we have something like that with with leia learning how to be you know a diplomat a leader a sort of i mean we kind of see it here but i want more Mm -hmm. and not and not you know as a as a side thing for someone else's someone else's show that that's what i'm getting at Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah but that was but that moment was cute yeah yes and you know when she kicks her uh cousin's or whatever whatever she did at the beginning to her to her dumb her dumb a cousin yes <laughs> yeah it's like he deserved it <laughs> it's like congratulations you won the award for the for most in need of smackings yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, someone yeah, who needs I, to take a trip to the right core pit yeah. yes holy uh, crap and you know the the um the the girl that plays young leia vivian Oh, um, she did awesome oh. yeah she's mm-hmm. you know obviously she needs to to bring her own to it because you know we change who is who we are yeah. as people you know the yeah personalities develop early but we can still evolve as people but you can see a little bit of you know she mm-hmm. she's i'm sure she's aware even at her age you know just how iconic Mm-hmm. Princess Leia is as a character, and how much Carrie Fisher was beloved portraying yes. that mm-hmm. character, mm-hmm. right? Um, so you know, that's there's just some big, big buns to fit to fill. <laughs> like, yeah. She yes. did her own version at the end, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. but you know, she, th- I mean, this Leia is she's 10 yeah yep. I mean, she's, 10 years she's old a, and, you know it's like we we get her you know we see her and get introduced to her at the start of the series and i don't even want to go down the rabbit hole of the the fandom backlash for this that and the oh, other thing but yeah, people are like yeah. this isn't leia she didn't act like she's 10 she's acting like a 10 year old well one thing act. one thing one thing i will say you forget one, what you acted like when you were 10 
I, I will yeah. say this. I will say this. In episode two, this was I did have a gripe with this. Is that yeah, you know, you're you're a little you're a little turd on your own on your own home turf. You can do that. But after episode two, after she's been kidnapped and Obi-Wan mm. goes and finds her and she's like, I want this, I want this. I'm like, girl, you just got kidnapped. You yes. like, do you not understand that you're trying to hide and blend in and not get caught? Mm-hmm. I mean, they're looking for you. How about you tone mm-hmm. it down a little bit? Or this like, is like, the same girl that later will will you know tell uh <laughs> tell uh grand moff tarkin that she recognizes yeah. foul stench well yeah that's, when, she brought she, on yeah, board, that's so. when she's an adult and she's had experience <laughs> yeah. in the diplomacy and stuff she's a little well, girl and i'm like i'm thinking back to when i was 10 I, you know i got you know i got lost at an amusement park once scared the crap out of me maybe i was a little younger but not much and i just I mean, and I knew my parents were somewhere, but I was just bawling because I couldn't find them. And I, mm-hmm. you know, I just kind of got separated. She just gotten kidnapped, tied up. And, you know, now it's like, I think the sarcasm and the snark would develop over time. But this is a little bit like, okay, you know, kid, just, just button it because you're trying to get out of here you don't need to you know this isn't like you're going to walmart and you need candy yeah. <laughs> you're like i want I, I, M&Ms, I, I, though. I, I, I think that she also sister coming after you yeah, shut up I, I think that she also <laughs> takes after um uh, yeah, yeah, well yeah she takes after obviously there's there's you know the whole nature versus nurture and how much genetics play versus mm-hmm. how you know who you grow up with so obviously that you know we're going to see bits of Padme and Anakin on her, but uh, I think much to um, her adopted mother oh. chagrin, I think Bale has uh, rubbed off on her because well, you know, yeah. what we've seen of Bale in the Star Wars universe, I, I can see where she's kind of getting it from. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just daddy like, wasn't telling yeah. her to tone it down, so she's yeah. just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think what he would Daddy do? Her. Okay, I think yeah. he indulges her quite a bit. So a little, yeah, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. It's just, well, and also Obi Wan, it's like you know, hey, the Jedi are being hunted. Let me, you know, dress up like a Jedi in the middle of this. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not exact, it's not perfect, but at the same time, it's like you guys don't know anything about sneaking around and being stealthy, do you? No. <laughs> and, and especially- Like, oh, they're hunting these... for a Jedi? Let me wear these dark, you know, these long brown robes with, a, you know, what seems to be a lightsaber holstered off yes. of my belt. Mm-hmm. Right? Which, which absolutely, <laughs> take your lightsaber with you on this mission. Yes. It doesn't need to be carried out in the open, not when you know you've got in, you know, in, uh, um, <laughs> Oh, crap i've just it, it, inquisitors I, I kept wanting to call yeah. them interrogators yes. inquisitors yeah, after inquisitors. you yeah. Yeah. yes inquisitors are not to mm-hmm. be trifled with my friend no yeah. nope play jedi fallen Unless order obi-wan you know. missed that day at the academy well <laughs> also what? also these inquisitors they're 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 a darth vader creation so but yeah, yeah I, I i know what you mean but yeah there's there are some things, there are some tactical things that I'm just kind of like, really, was that the smartest thing you could have done? Yeah, mm-hmm. well, there's a, there's, a, there's a few times where I just kind of wanted to reach through the screen and just kind of slap Obi-Wan around like, really? That's, that's, that's the, that's the hill you're willing to die on? Yeah. <laughs> it's like you I did mean, learn a thing with your first Padawan? Come on. Yeah. yeah, I just, I don't know. There, there were some things like, you know there's like he wants to train luke when he's old enough but at the same time there's a you know a trained jedi who's like you know we're we're trying to get we're trying to get the band back together and he's like no go bury your lightsaber in the middle of the desert it's like you could probably use some help Uh, here man mm -hmm, i mean it's mm -hmm. like okay i get that they want to go with the angle that you know he he's he's you know been through a lot he had to fight and he thinks kill his 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 you know padawan best friend and you know and now he's he's trying to watch over that best friend's children or well his son at least but you know it's it's like okay which 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 is it are you know bury go bury your lightsaber and forget about the force or hey we're gonna train 
we're going to train this kid because he's going to go, he's going to kill his, he's going to, you know, take on the empire and Mm -hmm. kill his dad. I'm like, oh boy. I mean, between this and, you know, for better, for worse, the, 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 the acting and the terrible writing aside in the prequels, what happens Mm -hmm. with Anakin and the way he's treated by the Jedi council. Mm-hmm. and yeah. what we see with luke you know essentially pulling at obi-wan himself in mm-hmm. the disney tr- you know the new trilogy mm-hmm. i just i want to take like the jedi council and just kind of slap them around a little <sighs> like mm-hmm. y'all are where's, like where's we mace must, windu we when you need him mm-hmm. with yeah the yeah like, well and that's, it's like we have these rules you know Nick jedi Fury. are not supposed to <laughs> have attachments and blah 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 and this is the way of the jedi and i'm like yeah look how good it's worked for you guys yeah mm-hmm. well which is why you it's keep ending them with with jedi with ptsd yeah <laughs> Right. <laughs> Which is why it's so frustrating that, you know, the, the, the expanded universe was decanonized because they dealt with a lot of those things. And they talked yes. about how, mm-hmm. you know, there, I mean, yeah, there are the Jedi, but then there are these other factions of, of, um, there's these other factions of force users that they don't follow the Jedi code. I mean, you'd have the Jedi and the Sith. Yeah. But then there's the, okay. The, the, the sisters of Darth Maul. Dathomir. Dathomir, Dathomir, thank you. Why am I having such a hard time with this, Jared? It's trying to get my attention for something. So hold on a minute. But um, (laughs) but yeah, but there are these other, like all these other things that don't have anything to do with the with the Skywalkers and the Jedi. And it's like, this is interesting. This is really good lore. There's a lot of cool stuff Mm -hmm. happening. And you just kind of toss that out and you know you you could you, you want to try to bring some of that back but not really and it's like there are some very odd choices going on with with uh, excuse me disney star wars these days and it's just it's mm-hmm. kind of hard to follow in, in some places yeah and they're even still kind of doing it i say now it's not now as far as the star wars universe is concerned this is still stuff that's taking place in the quote-unquote past but with the mandalorian luke forcing grogu to choose between training to become a jedi or going back with mando right mm-hmm. yeah it's like why really? does it have to be why does it have to be either or right why can't it be both yeah <sighs> so i mean just because yoda didn't give you kind of gave you that same yeah i was like luke this decided- is your chance to train jedi in a <laughs> new way forge your Ooh. own path try something you different not- you do not have to repeat the same steps that you went through. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Somewhere there is some psychologist being like, and this is why generational trauma is a thing. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. The cycle keeps getting repeated when yes. we should be trained to break it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. Well, Which is why I- Obi-Wan you know, keeps turning to trying to get in touch with Qui-Gon and right he's getting nothing mm-hmm. because he's just he's too he's not it he's not at peace and settled with the force well enough to yeah. I mean because you see how jumpy he is throughout this yeah you know I mean it's good well, acting and I think, on Ewan's part but yeah and mm-hmm. I think another reason too why he is jumpy is because he knows the Inquisitors after him. There's the thing with Leia, and I think he's worried that if Vader sees her, gets a read on her, and knows that that's his kid, mm-hmm. hell's going to break loose even worse. So I think that's probably why he's jumpy because he's just like okay that's leia and then if he finds out connection to luke it's just uh. so i think yeah. that's probably why he was jumpy or, i mean i'm just spitballing but oh yeah no i it. mean because it's you know as far as what has been shown until um i mean it's not until return of the jedi that Anakin mm-hmm. slash Darth even realizes that there's a second child. Mm-hmm. Right. 
you know, as far as he knows, and then, you know, Padme was only pregnant with one baby, even though she was huge. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, yeah. They didn't know it was twins until she, uh, she popped. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which yeah, actually makes me just, wonder if, um, they were premature anyway, because, uh, yeah. you know, just because of the situation and, and everything. And she was mm-hmm. not that big. Yeah. No. <laughs> But, you know, Star Wars, Advanced Universe, they have technology. I'm not worried about it. Yep. Yep. But, uh, so, yeah, you know, I mean, Darth Vader knows that he has a kid somewhere in the universe, maybe, mm-hmm. possibly. Maybe. I mean, he yeah. was told that he killed Padme, which, in a way, he kind of did. Uh, uh... <laughs> Yeah. Even if he didn't like you know pull the trigger you know the the literal trigger um, right yeah he he was number one cause behind it they're very <laughs> they're very like they're very they're, much they're, leaning on the from a certain point of view point of view yeah, over and they, over because they again. end up doing the same thing which i know people were talking about after the finale where they're like, oh, you know, they finally fix this 40 something year old plot hole of, you know, Luke was all like, you know, when he's confronted Darth Vader for the first time, he's like, you know, he told me, you know, he's like, you yeah. know, Obi-Wan never told you what happened to your father. And he's like, he said you killed him. He's like, no, I'm your father. And of course, you know, we knew we saw Obi-Wan when he was giving Luke the lightsaber for the first time mm-hmm. and explaining, he's like, your father was killed by a guy, you know, that's named Darth Vader. Darth yeah. Vader. So it's like in a roundabout way. Yeah. And then here it is where he and Darth have this confrontation. And, you know, he gets to see Anakin's face after besting open the helmet and finally giving the, the helmet the little damage that's been there since 1977. Mm-hmm. And the people are like, where did mm-hmm. that damage come from? Uh, <laughs> Here's your answer. Here you go. Um, <laughs> that, uh, that uh the you know any shred of who anakin was before is completely gone so as far you know it's very on the nose that obi-wan is like well then anakin truly is dead Mm -hmm. (laughs) like well there you go there's your justification i guess i guess yeah yeah but uh so yeah they, they like they do like using that very kind of if you tilt yeah. your head and squint yeah i mm-hmm. i mean it worked in return of the jedi because it was george kind of retconning himself mm-hmm. right i will yeah. say it is getting a little bit stale and tired in the disney uh star wars universe just because it's like okay yeah we know we've done this we can mm-hmm. do something else too. It's mm-hmm. it's okay. How you many can, variations of this be theme a, are we gonna go through? Yeah, mm-hmm. it can just be a straight up thing. It doesn't have to be, you know. Well, you know, riddle me this, riddle me that, blah blah blah. Yeah, why can't yeah. like you know why can't people in the the Star Wars universe just like say do what something or say something say. and yeah, it, it, that just be it. This There's isn't no, like this isn't like subterfuge or you know this isn't like wheel of time where the Aes Sedai actually are magically bound to never lie so they have to you know talk around it to get what they want actually I was thinking the 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 Fae and the Dresden files or that that too too. that that's another one but (laughs) yeah it's like as far as I know the Jedi do not have any sort of sort of restriction on on lying or 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 whatever they could you know straight up lie to your face and it would be fine mm-hmm. so it's like uh, you know just because just because you know alec guinness the ghost of, of obi-wan said what i told you was true from a certain point of view and it works for him in that one moment it okay. doesn't have to be everybody mm-hmm. right <laughs> right i'm just like guys it's it's you know the you know the, those the, it does not everything has to be a member berry I'm sorry, mm-hmm. but it doesn't. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's just, it's just, oh dear, mm-hmm. <laughs> a little, a little nutty. But um, yeah, yeah. But 
like at the same time it also i think for some folks it gives them a sense of closure too mm-hmm. i mean i i don't i was not one of those people that necessarily was looking for it i was really looking forward to seeing those two characters face each other again oh yes mm-hmm. <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah well I, I mean the minute they said oh hayden christensen's gonna be in this and they're just you're just like how yeah, and the way they brought him it in, in was suit, perfect. Put him in the suit. Put him in. Well, the yes, suit. put him in the suit. But you know, you could. I mean, he doesn't. Darth Vader doesn't sound like Caden Christensen, and you could put anybody in the suit and you know have him, you know, come come do the voice. I guess, but it's like, it well, goes, I mean, like, they did have gonna work? A, a, a stunt guy do some of the right the the suit stuff. Yeah, um, and they did have that one flashback I, I saw. So yeah, that was, mm-hmm. and that was that was good to see because especially you know those of us who watched the Clone Wars and we see that version mm-hmm. of Obi Wan and and Anakin, but it is based on Ewan you know, McGregor and Hayden Christensen. It's like okay, this is this is because we're seeing um we're seeing more of them outside just the prequels and in mm-hmm. that context. And, and like I I did I do remember seeing an interview uh with Hayden Christians where he said that he had watched Clone Wars and loved what they'd done with the character and and where they'd taken it but you know in in between and and it kind of you know helped kind of solidify the character in his own mind. So I was like okay I you know I'm glad that he appreciates it because I know he's gotten a lot of flack for mm-hmm. for stuff over the years but at the same time he kind of put that he put that foundation in for them right. to work with anyway so you know and props for, to the guy. And considering what he got and what he had to work with he did yes he and did he, the best he, he could he, and he, yeah he and he's he's another one that you know if he has really good direction he'll do amazing things also oh know, yeah you know we we all know about george and his direction but you know mm-hmm, man's yeah. a storyteller but some of those details but yeah, that's a little bit to be desired there yeah <laughs> that's neither here nor there i mean i i am glad that, that hayden christensen at least like realizes that it's not on it's not all on him and nor do nor do the no. fans think that mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. So, like, for those <laughs> fans that did at first that opinion has changed <laughs> quite quite a bit yeah i, and, I yeah. chauncey really loved this mm-hmm. and he mm-hmm. is you know he's a huge star wars fan but he is not above criticizing it when he feels it needs it right so Mm -hmm. he's he's not an apologist by any means and he absolutely loved this and actually was like the new episode would drop and then he proceed to go over and watch more of the cartoons that he hadn't watched like he's Mm -hmm. he's watched all the bad batch more you know he's gotten further than i have (laughs) so yeah (laughs) Well, that so works. that's that's definitely a good sign when someone like Chauncey, who mm-hmm. you know, is yeah, would know you know he's <laughs> deep into it and knows way more of the lore and the extended mm-hmm. universe than I ever could and care to learn yeah. about. Um, yeah, so. well, and and I and I do want to say this just about you know the critic criticism about Star Wars in general, um, and and I actually got this from. Uh, a youtuber well i don't think he's doing much youtube anymore but he is it's it's just some random guy and this is like back when he would compare the marvel and dc videos with those action figures then you know he he hasn't done it in in a few years but there were some good ones but he did a, he did a bit about um it was like green lantern and, and deadpool which you mm-hmm. know is funny in and of itself but you know poor green lanterns like he finally gets a movie and it sucks and people hate it and there and, and you know uh spider-man i think it's spider-man or superman come in and like they're trying to to, to co- console him and 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 you know they're kind of saying like he's like well what about all these people who hate my movie and it's like no no, no. they still like you they they right. are critical of the movie because it put you in a bad light and they know you deserve better and mm-hmm, so that's right. how i feel exactly. about star wars mm-hmm. and and some of the criticism that has been leveled you know some of it justifiable is like we know that star wars oh, yeah. deserves better and yeah so, right yeah so when, when i'm sitting here going like okay i didn't like that why couldn't you do it this way and also because 
you know, we do have the, 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 the expanded universe and that's been around forever, no matter what. Right. Not that the expanded saying. universe didn't have some clunkers. Well, but that's true. I'm not part, saying it didn't. Everything, but as a whole, yeah. everything was mm-hmm. almost chef's kiss. <laughs> yes. So it's kind of like, it, it kind of like that. And so it's like, you know, we talk about, you know, I, you know, I, I, I got things I, I, I want to say just kind of like this didn't work for you know this didn't work for me this didn't work for me or this didn't work for me and it's not that I'm like I hate Star Wars it's like I know it can be better I know I've seen it be Mm -hmm. better even Mm -hmm. with even you know under the Disney banner I mean holy crap Mandalorian and you know Bad Batch is really good I mean Jedi Mm -hmm. Fallen Order the video game it had (laughs) I mean, EA, you know, who has the, the yeah. Star Wars video game license, they have not covered themselves in glory no, uh, just as a company, not just mm-hmm. with Star Wars, but as a company. And I was like, oh, gosh, the EA is doing this game. This is going to suck. Oh, no, it's amazing. And I watched. Oh, yeah. every, I didn't play it because I stink at those kinds of games. But Jared played it. It's got the whole through story. And I'm, and there are actually yep. some things from Fallen Order that made it into Kenobi. That I'm just yep. like, yeah, you guys got that from the video game, didn't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, if you ever get a chance either to play or, you know, watch a Let's Play Jedi Fallen Order and I, and, and there is a sequel coming out, I'm just like, please don't screw this up because it's so good. And, and it really I'm has. Totally playing through that. Oh, you are? Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah, and, I... and it has nothing to do with the Skywalkers at all. I think like Darth Vader mm-hmm. shows up at one point, but that's it. And mm-hmm. yeah. Um, spoilers <laughs> sorry um but it's star wars <laughs> well i know, yeah. I I know. Say, is darth vader still alive yes and he's going to appear so yeah. he's gonna be in it <laughs> yes money dear boy but uh yeah so yes. it's and if he's so, not alive he's gonna make a at least mention yeah, oh, yeah. right you have to name drop mm, oh, exactly yeah, for sure but uh, yeah so it's so so yeah i mean i i do have criticisms that that i do want to mention but it's it's not out of i hate this and you guys should just you know fall it's because we care yeah it's like i know you can do better i know that i have seen you do better and you can Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. and i think i mean i don't know i don't know if we want to go down this road quite yet or if you guys have more you want to gush over no, nope, go uh, ahead. <laughs> we're my, my biggest we're on a trail. Let's go. On a trail. Yeah. Okay. Oh. My biggest complaint about this about this show is in the trailer before it started, it was all it was it, you know, the trailer was tattooing, was Obi-Wan watching over Luke, and we have that utterly devastating line that exchange between Obi-Wan and Owen, you know, like you trained his father. And it's like, oh man, if you focus on this, this is gonna be good. And then and you know, you see Luke from a distance. And I'm just like, oh, this is this will be fine. Like he's looking over Luke. But then you watch mm-hmm. the show and it's Leia. And I'm like, I thought you were supposed to be watching Luke. And and I mean That's what he thought too. Yeah. <laughs> and, it's, yeah. and it's like, okay, yeah, I I I wouldn't mind, you know, and, and these in, these in, these you know, inquisitors, they're they're bad news for sure. And it's like, okay, oh, yeah. I could see where they would like find out, oh, maybe, you know, there's a, there's some force sensitive sensitives over on Tatooine and they shouldn't be, we're going to go try to find them. And that's not good. And, you know, and, and, you know, Obi-Wan has to, has to keep his distance from, from the, from Luke and his family. Cause Owen has just said, you know, step off. We don't, we don't need you. We don't need your help. Cause right. obviously, you know, he does not like it. And we, and we know this from the beginning of, of new hope because Luke's aunt and uncle, well, his, his uncle at least do not like Obi Wan, and mm-hmm. it's like now it, it, it's like you know because what I was kind of envisioning. If you ever remember from Animaniacs, I know I'm like going off on a weird tangent. Um, the cartoons with Mindy and Buttons, mm-hmm. and and you mm-hmm. know Mindy wanders off. She's a little kid, wanders off, gets in trouble, and Buttons is trying to like save her, and it's all very cartoony and fun but she does she's completely oblivious to what's going on she's just you know crawling after like she's a butterfly just a little toddler just yeah doing just her little thing. Yep. and the dog yep. buttons her dog is trying to keep her for you know keep her out of danger and he gets in trouble for letting her wander off or you know, for wandering off or doing something bad that dogs do and it's all very funny and i'm like what if this is like obi-wan watching luke like he gets he wanders off and gets lost and obi-wan has to protect him from 
the desert of Tatooine. I mean, take your pick from the of the dangers. Mm-hmm. And Luke has no idea, but Obi Wan's kind of you know, and you know maybe at the end Luke and Obi Wan meet and and you know that's where Luke kind of gets that. Oh, I know, I know who he is. I kind of like him, but I don't have a real relationship with him. But I know, you know, there's a connection. But I'm not going to tell my uncle because he, I'll know he'll he'll be upset. So they kind of have that, like, oh, it's that old hermit, but he's he's harmless. He's my friend, sort of thing. And I'm like, mm-hmm. that's kind of what I was expecting this show to be, and it kind it it kind of wasn't. And I felt like that's what they were setting up when they with their marketing and promotion. And I was like, why Leia? I mean, yeah, I get because Leia is, you know, she's supposed to be on Alderaan and Bail Organa and and this 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 Inquisitor, this Reva. It's kind of like, okay, I see you're setting it up for a spinoff with her, but why do you have to shove it in this show? I mean, we've been waiting for Ewan McGregor to reprise his role since we since we knew that Disney was was taking over. And it's like, this is the big thing. Why does it have to also be setting up all these other people? I don't want to, I, I, like, I'll get, I'll get to that when I, when I get there. I just said, I want, I would like a show with little Leia and, and daddy Bale, but mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be at the expense of Obi-Wan. That's my, that's my hang up with it. And that's, that's it's like, this, this is just so weird, especially since she didn't have a connection to him in A New Hope either right mm-hmm. and right. it was all luke she was upset when stories yeah she just heard stories and she, i mean she knew you know obi-wan kenobi but she didn't know who he was she didn't know what he looked like she which you know she might have had more of a of a of a of a breakdown when he died in in a new hope but you know right luke, but she he didn't. freaks out it was more which, luke. yeah yeah so i'm just kind of like you gave him you gave him this 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 relationship this connection this friendship which is never gonna which just isn't there when she's older and it just kind of feels it feels like you Unless you know her you, memories get retcon somehow down the line but it's which just like, you know what? now you've now you've created something you have to retcon somehow and it's like right. that was not necessary like you have luke and you have you have little luke like we want to see yeah. luke let him have yeah. some spotlight. He, you know, Obi Wan is watching over Anakin's son, and mm-hmm. it's, it's unless just... something happened with the scheduling with young Luke, so they had to do the one eighty. But then it's just like, wow. Well, Maybe, but yeah, I just, I, I mean, yeah, I know scheduling gets 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 borked, and you know, last couple of years yeah. you just kind of you know fill everything out in pencil because it's not going to work right. anyway. You know, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow? But it's just like it's luke it's luke's story luke and obi-wan they have the connection and that would it, i don't know it just it just especially because luke is the one in in you know even in the disney continuity luke is the one who becomes the jedi master and he's the one who has right. has the academy Leia starts uh, you, know, uh, you know according to rise of skywalker but she doesn't complete her jedi training no which is like okay but yeah, I, I just I, I have a lot of question marks about this about this show. Mm-hmm. And there there are some good moments. I'm not gonna I, oh, I mean yeah. there's that wet bit at the end where Obi-Wan faces you know is facing Vader and it's just you know Ewan McGregor is like that is the best performance as this character mm-hmm. you've ever given. Mm-hmm. I mean, and he's given some good ones. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, I'm yeah. just like that's that's what we that's what I came here for. That's what this mm-hmm. is all about. It's just I had to get through a lot of what the hell are you doing to get there (laughs) so yeah and like i said this is this all comes from a place of love and i want this to be better i know it can be better and i i mean i I do have some disappointment overall i mean it it is what it is i enjoyed it for what it was i just i just wish it could have been better i i have i don't feel like they're, they're 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 nitpicks i feel like there's you were like why didn't you go in this other direction it made more sense but and and that you know that's i think completely justified in those type of comments and and criticisms and 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 comments Mm -hmm. uh, that i think are perfectly acceptable it's when the people start attacking like the actors for just 
being in something that drives mm-hmm. me bonkers. Yeah, um, that's a line that should never be crossed. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, do I honestly, not go there. I don't think that is the majority. And I, no. I don't, no. I don't. They're, they just it. tend to have be really, really loud because they have yeah. nothing better to do with their time. Okay. I, I, I will <laughs> right. tell you this. It is, I, 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 there's an author that I follow and he has, it's called the three, that, what is it? The, the three cooters law of internet discourse. And basically it's there's just three random guys named cooter who are in your mom in their mom's basement who say something offensive maybe one of the accounts is a sock puppet and it gets the attention of of, of an outlet and they they all have to come around and, and roundly condemn cooter for for his offensive comments and mm-hmm. everybody has to step in and say no i denounce this so, so all of a sudden and people are like what's going on like why is everybody upset and it's just these just three random accounts, one of at least one of which probably isn't even real. And then, then you have troll accounts that, that get going and you know start saying all this like really offensive stuff just to get people riled up, but they don't really mm-hmm. think it. And, and mm-hmm. it's just kind of like, okay, let's you know, and this is kind of my 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 MO when I'm dealing with stuff like this. It's like, okay, hold on a second. Is this something that you think a reasonable person would say? either on the internet or out loud in person whatever it, are, are the majority of people screaming that no 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 this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong and that's why it's getting all the attention you're probably dealing with three guys named cooter mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> just to put it in perspective so mm-hmm. that's that's kind of my i mean you know we've all been on the internet long enough we know when people when you know you've got you've you've got an anomaly of of one or two people who's gotten the whole world riled up about something really stupid. So yeah, one of them, one of them may not be a troll. Yeah, one of them might just be you know, haha. I want to poke the bear because I I got nothing better to do other than you know lick Cheeto dust off my fingers. <laughs> so and those people are not worth listening to or giving or giving any of their of their. Uh, comments uh, the dignity of a response yeah so i would just ask people to keep that in mind please when you're dealing with the internet because people are stupid on the internet so when you see (laughs) something that seems inflammatory and troll-like before you hit respond and go off on full caps lock and you know thinking you're Mm -hmm. being the great defender take a Mm -hmm. moment and think is this legit or is this just cooter? Yeah, it's cooter. And, even, exactly. and that can even be said with some of the quote unquote entertainment posts that get posted. Oh yeah. With some of them. Yeah. It's like, yeah. don't who is listen it? to the who is it that, that who is it that was it Sean that posted the where the headline was like, are they gonna kill off Luke Skywalker in the finale? <laughs> Yeah. Head. Oh yeah. Once you actually okay. read the article, you realize that they were just pulling your leg. Okay. Yeah. As someone who has worked on on a blog where I got paid, and you know you had to deal with the algorithm and the the SEO and all that mm-hmm. stuff, and, and this has been around even before the internet. Clickbait. We we just call it clickbait because it's it's the sexy term for it but Mm -hmm, clickbait headlines have been around forever because Mm -hmm. the media the newspapers whatever however you consume your media they have to make money in order to stay in business so the 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 flashier the headline is and especially if they know it's gonna piss you off whether it's Mm -hmm. true or not they will write it and it's not just you know the 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 weird blogs on the internet or the tabloids even even quote unquote respectable journalists and, yes. and, and newspapers mm-hmm. will do this. They just kind of do it in a little more, I want to say classy way, but it's still meant a to more evoke panache. A, yeah. You're still you're still <laughs> meant to evoke a response, which will get you to read it. Mm-hmm. You either mm-hmm. you know, click, buy the newspaper, turn on the the, the 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 TV. This is why you know bad news gets plastered all over 24-7 because our our little monkey brains, humans just cannot resist. You know, if it bleeds, it leads. It leads. Because mm-hmm. that's what pays the bills. Mm-hmm. And yep. you know, people who complain about clickbait headlines, 
that's how that's how they make their money and that's why i no oh, yeah. longer work for that blog because i sucked at writing those kind of headlines yeah i did well, make in, enough in money this case for though the the yeah. article they they knew exactly they were oh yeah the, it was almost satirizing clickbait well well yeah so, I, i'm just mm-hmm. I, i'm not i'm not talking about just that article i'm talking about other yeah. ones too but you know yeah. it goes this back one to they they, they do exactly what they were doing in the hopes that you know that uh yeah it may be yeah. <laughs> make a point <laughs> so yeah right it's yeah. a process so. for those of us who know our star wars sisters like why should it even click we know he lives yeah <laughs> no we want yeah. to kill him <laughs> but that, that i think that that's what they were doing was you know poking the bear at the people that were like yeah well actually yeah actually, comic book guy in the, you know the simpsons yeah <laughs> hasn't hasn't showered in a week yeah <laughs> but yeah so uh, yeah just there's your friendly psa in dealing with with media on the internet just just use your brain don't feed the cooters don't feed the cooters yep, don't feed the cooters and exactly. click with caution yes <laughs> so yeah they're they're just trying to make money that's all it is yeah. and I, I will say the same thing for the the the, the reputable news media as well just just yeah but mm-hmm. so that that that's all i'm gonna say about that, that yeah, yeah. <laughs> what if we all think of leia's little droid lola <laughs> merchandising I mean, and, and, and then i'm just thinking you know oh the spirit of colson even though it's a different universe well that no we know <laughs> as far as uh, you know in Agents of Shield, mm-hmm. Coulson has quoted Star Wars, so Star Wars as an IP exists in the MCU. Ooh, so, so maybe he named somewhere the car after the little somewhere Ooh. LMG Coulson, who's still you know out and around doing his thing, hopefully has watched this and was like, "Oh, Alola," you know. <laughs> i like because yeah. i that was stand like, phil Come colson on, where's and i go you know, where's the right. line don't touch lola yeah <laughs> like i although is, those that those is bounty, a head those bounty cannon. hunters touched lola and there was hell oh i know yeah mm-hmm. that is it that is a head cannon that i am rolling with go for it i love it gladly and, and and the um the pseudo jedi or real jedi was played by one of the eternals yes <laughs> i'm just like yeah. wait a minute Kumail, yeah, Kumail, Kumail and, 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 and johnny who, who to plays cut um oh cut, crap um king kingo mm-hmm. in yeah, the kingo. eternals yeah. who has been name dropped several times yes. in miss marvel but we will talk about marvel. that once marvel is done. <laughs> yes <laughs> but that is funny that, that you've got the uh, yeah he's 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 in one ip and then his character in another ip is being talked about in another show based in that universe <laughs> so, i say my ep <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Cool. Oh, we are like, meta. Yeah, is this a new version? We are meta and we love it. Is yes. this a new version of it's all connected? Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. I'm thinking so. Yeah. Either that or he's going to become the Kevin Bacon of Disney or something. I don't know. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, that was. <laughs> it's like oh all of the but it's like most of the jedi are dead and the ones that are still alive are in hiding but don't worry this kind jedi will help you if you are in trouble as long as you have enough galactic credits (laughs) i just hope the inquisitors don't catch up to him because oh no kid that seems like a like a like a bad dis business decision yeah, yeah. well it's, it seems like he might have turned a new leaf there by the end mm-hmm. we can yeah. only hope so 
Yeah. I'm and just then, like... um, yeah. Well, yeah. and then what's her name, which could have been a love interest for Obi Wan, was played by the actress who played Susie in Torchwood. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Uh huh. Yeah. So do you think a lot of familiar faces are like oh yeah there are some familiar faces some familiar voices Zach Braff does a voice mm-hmm. plays yep. into the voice of the transport driver mm-hmm. um, we get Ian McDermott back as Emperor Palpatine yes. I wondered Palpatine. if he was going to pop up at some point I'm like ah there yes. you are yep all you gotta well, do is give the, him the, the, put the little robe over his head little makeup put him in the little you know do the mm-hmm. effects for the yep. little hologram thing you'll never know that the age does not you know matter well, yep um, well i mean emperor palpatine's all pruny anyway so exactly like, so yeah, yeah exactly. It, it, with the little, yeah. little communicator holograms it, yeah it doesn't matter so yeah Exactly. Well, and now that we know from the rise of Skywalker, we know he has clones of plenty, so it really doesn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that <laughs> yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter which version we get. It's yeah. and we got yeah. uh, Anthony Daniels comes back to C three PO. Blink and you miss yep. him, kind of. Tamara Morrison, yep. blink and you miss him as a homeless clone trooper. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well that one's mm-hmm. less blinking you'll miss him it's more he's there and it's just like hey you're here to play a clone yeah, yeah. and that you and mcgregor's daughter plays the spice dealer yes yeah. yes yeah. Mm-hmm. on dayu so <laughs> yep uh that was a really cool uh well, flea I guess from the, the red hot pili- chili peppers <laughs> is the bounty oh hunter yes that kidnaps Leia. oh yeah and you can't mm-hmm. catch a 10 year old well yeah <laughs> just like really we can play a bad guy <laughs> well yeah no no he was you know he was he was fun it was just the chase scene was a little bit okay yeah yeah i was just waiting for marty mcfly hey needles yeah you you chicken, chicken? <laughs> uh, i'll never know no yeah. mm, exactly <laughs> uh, and of course we get the Oh, so recognizable voice of James Earl Jones. Yes. Mm-hmm. When Darth Vader's helmet is on and fully functional. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. Oh. Now, which was good. What did we all? And then Liam Neeson. What did I we was, think? What I was. Oh, think? I was so worried mm. they were not going to pay that off. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. We were getting it was getting so close to the end, and I'm like, come on, Koi Gong, come on, Koi Gong, come on, Koi. And finally he shows up. I'm like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, this, you couldn't that's kind you couldn't, of the you couldn't do this show and not pay that off, especially after right. he didn't show back up for, for Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, right. And and you know, Yoda had to kind of tell him, Oh, yeah, by the way, yeah, it's it's like, but, mm-hmm. I was like, surely it's like because we know he's coming back to do the voice of Qui-Gon mm-hmm. in an upcoming and he cartoon. Has, yeah, he has so done it's it like in was it Homer's. that hard to just get him on a screen, you know, in front of a green screen somewhere? Mm-hmm. Give him some hair mm-hmm. extensions, that'd be yeah. fun. Yeah, yeah. Do the thing. Come on, do the thing. So. <laughs> yeah, because it's kind of like the Sean Connery showing up at the end of Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, kind of. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that that kind of a payoff that you didn't hope to expect. Because I I was completely shocked. I'm like, wow, I didn't see that coming. All right, sweet. <laughs> yep. But yeah, they they like that that needed to happen, especially because at the mm-hmm. beginning Obi Wan really wasn't trying to do that training that yoda had given him before and it's kind of mm-hmm. like okay yeah i know it was bad and you're trying to lay low and not use the force and everything but come on yoda gave you homework yes mm-hmm. you do you do what the little green muppet says i don't <laughs> yes. care who you are so qui is basically the principal saying okay <laughs> listen up bud (laughs) yeah uh, that was like uh, for me that was like the one payoff where i'm like come on 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 come
where is it come on i know you're doing it the only mm-hmm. the only other and i was talking with chazia about this after we both watched the finale and i was waiting for qui-gon and i was kind of hoping maybe we would see the emperor so it was like that paid off too yeah. uh we got the hello there uh yep. so um yes. but uh the the only thing and i was like they could have done it and it, it, it this would have been one of those things where it probably would have been 50 50 split but i was kind of thinking when uh darth and obi-wan have their second face off in uh-huh. the final episode because obviously we had the 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 their face off earlier and obi-wan gets seriously injured thank goodness for back to tanks uh um, right? kidding yeah yeah <laughs> uh, so when they have their second face off and darth vader uses the force to crack the ground open and obi-wan falls into that pit and before he oh. starts covering with the rocks mm-hmm yeah, you know, Obi Wan's stuck in the ground, looking. At, I really was kind of like the are high ground. Have Darth Vader say something about being on the high ground now. High ground. <laughs> yeah, we're like, gonna get a high ground line here. <laughs> <laughs> like part of me kind of wanted it, and then part of me was like, mm. "Oh, is that too on the nose?" That would that would be a little that would that would be a little too <laughs> memey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, but yeah. there's still like, kind of there's part of me that's trying to kind of still wanted it. <laughs> well, true, true, but. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just like, but I will trade well, that. He might have been there, Anakin so. might have been thinking it, but he didn't say it. Let's just put yeah, it yeah. that way. There's yeah, that's, the it, might, it might not have <laughs> sound cool in, in in the Darth Vader voice. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if it had still been Hayden Christensen's voice, but yeah, maybe not with James Earl Jones, it would have probably wouldn't have sounded the quite the same. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, I will trade that for the hello there. So yeah, yes. <laughs> Which we all know he was thinking it though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like I have the high ground now, and now I'm gonna bury you mm-hmm. under a pile of rocks. Yeah. Yep. I thought maybe that's when Qui Gon would show up and just be like, "Obi Wan, get your head out of your ass." <laughs> and <laughs> yep. Do what you need to do. Quit feeling sorry for yourself Seriously. and get out of this hole right it's this like, is well, me smacking you upside the head minus you with his gimmer stick <laughs> yes we're tired everyone's tired of sad sack obi-wan mm-hmm. fuck up you're freaking obi-wan <laughs> kenobi it's gonna be fine yeah mm-hmm. but anyway so there you go there is our friend obi-wan kenobi mm, yes in all yeah. his glory gloriousness and we may or may not get a season two according to kathleen kennedy (laughs) we'll see depending on what you believe yeah but there we go we Mm -hmm. so we did we talk everybody's ear off (laughs) oh we covered all the high points okay all right. Well, if any of our listeners want to chime in with their thoughts on on Obi Wan Kenobi or anything else we've discussed during the course of this podcast, you can send us feedback. Our email address is fiveishfangirls at gmail You can also visit our website, which is the fiveishfangirls and that has links to all of our social media um, and ways to support the podcast: Patreon, our merch shop, and uh, you know as always we thank you for listening and supporting us however that support whatever form that support takes um glad you're out there listening and enjoying what we do so we try to put out a quality quality show every week so we'll uh so you guys can all enjoy (laughs) i think i said enjoy twice there in a, mm. in a row Never. it is it is late i am tired i have been moving boxes today yeah <laughs> yeah that's okay cool 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 all right and if you happen to be at in conjunction this weekend make sure you say hi
Otherwise, until next week, we shall sign off for this week. This is Brittany and Bowdo saying goodnight. This is Chrissy saying goodnight from Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin saying good evening. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Whether it's Marvel or Star Wars, one rule to always follow. Don't touch Lola. to the Five Ish Fangirls podcast. You can find more episodes and information at the fiveishfangirls.com. Any and all books, movies, games, and any other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders. No copyright infringement is intended or implied. If you wish to support the show, the easiest way is to leave us a rating and review. More ratings and reviews will make it easier for others to find the show. If you wish to support us monetarily, you can do so at patreon.com slash fiveishfangirlspodcast. All money goes towards fees and equipment to keep the show going. For official Fiveish Fangirls merchandise, visit redbubble.com slash people slash fiveishfangirls. We love hearing from our listeners and encourage feedback. You can email us at fiveishfangirls at gmail.com. You can also like and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fiveishfangirls. Thank you so much for listening and may the squee be with you.